Well, finally, we uh, interrupt this program to talk about, well, my interrupting on this program. Some of you have had enough, say I go way too far. Art emails, your voice is very grating, and you continue to interrupt your guests when they are answering your questions. Why don't you retire? Donald in Grove City, Ohio. Cavuto, will you please shut up and let your guests talk? You had other stuff to say, but... I lost the email. Anyway, Jim in Florida, when you ask a question, shut up and listen to the answer. Your guests are trying to explain something and you keep interrupting. It's rude as hell. Jim, it's, it's rude if they really are explaining, not so if they're just avoiding. And in this age of fiscal cliff yapping politicians who'd rather spout speeches than offer solutions, a lot of avoiding going on here. Very few specifics. You might find it rude to interrupt a speech, Jim. I find it rude or allowing one. Betty in New Mexico writes, I understand the need to prevent them from rambling on, but if that's what they're going to do, why bother booking them? To get answers, Betty. And when they're not answering or worse, stonewalling, I do have to step in. Still, some argue that I don't step in enough. From Carl in New York, you let Democrats spin and spin. Elena in Detroit, curious how you never interrupt a Republican, Cavuto, don't you think? Are these guys watching the same show? Sal in New Jersey, you're a gutless, spineless lapdog to whatever powerful guest you're sucking up to. You sit on that fancy set of yours like a clueless Buddha, letting these politicians run roughshod all over you. If you don't have it in you to challenge, how do I get this to your boss, Roger L., so I can have him fire you? Say I'm Bill O'Reilly, Sal. And via MSN, you're a fat ignoramus, and you're wrong. I'm not an ignoramus. Kelly in Oregon, why don't you engage your guests more and show some class instead of all but calling them names, you puffed up plastic air blowhard? I'll consider the classy suggestion, Kelly. This from David via AOL. If you're so smart, why do you look and sound so dumb? Well, you got me, David. Must be good genes. Vincent via Yahoo. Someone told me your voice sounds the way it does because you're sick or something. Then I'm in a doctor's office and I caught this article on you and I felt really bad. Not bad enough to like you, just bad that Fox couldn't see through its pity and find someone healthy and with it to replace you. Okay, Vincent, I'll put you down as a maybe on being a fan. Alonzo in Puerto Rico writes, where I come from, we beat the crap out of arrogant jerks like you. Alonzo, where I come from, we don't email stuff like that. We do it, unless you come here and do it. Anyway, Kyle in Washington, D.C., I read somewhere you're very trusted. By whom? Aliens from outer space? Yes, Kyle, exactly. <laughs> Alexa in New York City, I find you incredibly hot in an intellectual sort of way. Well, you're not alone, Alexa, you're not alone. Jen in Atlantic City, this kitty wants to play with a certain anchor boy toy. No interruptions, though. None intended, Jen, but you are scaring me. More is via AOL. So I looked you up on the internet and discovered that despite what you show on the air, you're smart, well-educated, well-regarded. And here's what I found the killer. 30 years in the business and you've never been fired? I pray there's always a first time and it's coming soon. Well, I pray you're wrong, Morris, and that you stop emailing. Gilbert via Yahoo, I find you a fascinating TV anchor specimen in that you're not very good looking, you sound like a sick parrot just yammering and yammering and dress like something between Gomez from the Adams Family and Nathan Lane. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny, from Birdcage. But there you sit on national TV and here I sit watching you. Is this a great country or what, Cavuto? It is indeed, Gilbert, it is indeed. Carol in Atlanta, Georgia, if you weren't uh, there for your constant interruptions, you'd be perfect, but alas, you're an ass. You love the sound of your own voice more than peace for your viewers' ears. Well, alas, Carol, I'm only seeking out truth for my viewers' ears, not speeches, answers. They don't start answering. I don't stop interrupting. In fact, Chip out in South Bend says I shouldn't. And his is the email. I am now officially called.